Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to go through every single watercolor palette and tube set I have. <laughs> um, so this may be a long video. Grab a drink, grab a snack, get one for me. But yeah, let's dive in. Um, I'm not going to go in any particular order because that would take forever. Um, let's start off with the Artistro 48 colors. I will not lie, I bought it for the tin. <laughs> the tin is my favorite color and it's pretty. I'm hoping I can like maybe use something to scrub that off, but the paint quality is what you would expect. These are a budget set for sure. Um, I do have them swatched here. You can see they're pretty chalky. Well, maybe you can't, but I can. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can tell these are not high end of anything. Um, in fact, I'll probably put these in my D-stash pile over here maybe. <clears throat> okay. And then in this nifty little tin, I just have a bunch of random handmade watercolors from different um, companies. I know I have like some Renaissance, um, Poems About You, and I think Mrs. Hand Painted is in here too. I just kind of stored them in there so they weren't rolling around everywhere. Put that with the other ones. Okay. Now, I'm trying to do the ones that have swatch cards in them first. Oh, then I have the White Knights pastel set. So these are the colors. It was actually really, I mean, they're really pretty, very opaque, but what do you expect? I mean, these are a pastel set pretty much, I'm pretty sure they're loaded with PW6, <laughs> but they did come in a nice little plastic tray. Um, I mean, it's good for traveling, but I don't often use pastels, so that might end up in a de-stash pile as well. Then I grabbed a dollar brownie set. Uh, this was on sale at Jackson's, so I decided to grab it. Did this not come with a, oh, we'll show you that one in a minute. I'm trying to do the ones that I know have swatch cards in them. Let's do these. Okay, so once upon a time, I thought it would be a good idea to collect all of the Primo Marketing <laughs> sets. Um, so, they have multiple sets. The only one that has overlapping colors is... Is it called skin tone or complexion? Something along those lines. That one has colors from these other sets. The rest of these are by themselves. Um, really cute curated sets. I'm not gonna lie. They're pricey though. So I have the Woodlands one. And the colors are beautiful. They give you their light fast ratings. They give you the pigments. So there's, you know what you're working with. But isn't that pigment, or that palette luscious? See, then we have the Odyssey palette. Uh, swatch cards kind of can change. So some of their older ones don't have the pigment info, but you can actually just go on their website and grab it. This one, I honestly wasn't as impressed with <laughs> as I was hoping it would be, but all right. Then we have Terrain. This one is one of my favorites. Beautiful greens. Oh, look at those. I love it. Even this purple smoke tree, that's a really pretty color. Then we have pastel dreams. Now what's nice about this is they don't shove a bunch of white. Um, so PW6 into their pastels. Actually very few even had it, I think. I remember when I did a review on my other channel, none of them have PW6. So that was kind of impressive, but um, the colors are really pretty. I do like them. And they're not as opaque as, say, the um, White Knights ones. Okay, then we have the Classics. Which, as you would think, would include classic colors. But they're kind of a little different. Um, you do get a good yellow, a good red, even a good blue. And they even give you a pink. I wish it was a slightly different, more magenta-ish color so I could make better mixes. But it's a good palette. Um, let's see. Then we have Shimmering Lights. 
these are all their sparkly ones. So you've got like gold, bronzes, coppers, pinks. Oh, so sparkly. <laughs> They're really cute. Yes, more. I, I had collected a lot and then um, quite a few were sent as happy mail because subscribers of my channel knew I was collecting them. This is a vintage pastel set. And I'm not going to lie, I really like this one. Now this one is a lot more chalky, a lot more opaque. Uh, definitely has some PW6 in their colors. Not all though, but look at that black. That thing is awesome. <laughs> These wet down really nicely though. So then we have the Essence set. I don't think I've actually used this one outside of swatching. I should though. Look at those colors. Aren't they pretty? Really dark palette, but again, most of these wash out really well, so I don't judge it necessarily by the high concentrated swatch. Then we have Tropicals. You know, I've used this one a few times. I love the colors. I do want to try and get them all in like one pan and color family order, but then other times I'm like, you know, maybe I'll just keep them separate so I can grab one on the go. And that was kind of the point, right? <laughs> then I have Decadent Pies. This one's kind of unique. So they're all named after pies, which is cute. And you got a mixture of some sparkly colors, but then you have some non-sparkly ones. Um, really pretty selection of colors. I, I don't need the, glitter, the glittery ones as much, but that's all right. Then we have, last but not least, the Currents. This is one of my favorite ones from them, I'm not going to lie. It is the prettiest selection of blues and greens. Look at that. Gorgeous colors. Um, yeah, it is, it is definitely one of my favorites. So let me put those away. Okay, and then I did collect all three of the Jane Davenport palettes. Oh, I had to tape this one because it wouldn't stay closed. Um, her paints are okay, but they are, like I, like others, um, pretty expensive for what they are. Now this one is the Bright palette. So these are the colors here. They're really pretty though. Um, the paints are pretty good in performance. They're not like chalky, like some of the cheaper ones. And then we have another set, uh, the Neutral Palette. I haven't used this one much outside of swatching it. Probably because I wasn't really blown away. <laughs> but it was okay. Um, as you can see, they're, yeah, cheaper made paints. Totally paying for the name. Oh, see, that's what happens with that when it pops open. All right, then we have this one here. I know I used a little bit more. This is the Glitz C Palette really pretty colors. The last two are supposed to be like a metallic, but they don't have a lot of shimmer. Um, to be honest, I'll probably be putting my Jane Davenport's in my D-stash pile. Um, in fact, I'm going to remind myself and put them there now. And that's just because I know I'm not going to use them since I have found, well, different paints I like. <laughs> okay, so next we have Paul Rubens. Now this one, oh, this is their glittery ones. These are the first generation, I want to say. Um, I love their palettes, um, and their paints really aren't too bad. But this was their whole shimmery set. This was a lot of fun to swatch. Oh, loads of glitter in these paints, I'm not going to lie. Uh, they're really well made, too. So I, I really do like the Paul Rubens. Um, they were kind of like my first paint I got that was artist grade. <laughs> All right. And then this one ugh, has a warp tin. Oops. Sorry, camera. But yeah, this was a nice little set as well. I think I had gotten this. It was on sale. I didn't actually swatch this one in here. I have it swatched elsewhere. But either way, um, good paints. I need to... Probably swatch that card, so I'm going to set that off to the side. All right, what do we have next? Okay, then we have the Christy Rice palette. She just came out with this the last year. Um, 
So it is so pretty to look at, <laughs> as is anything she makes. And you open it up here. Decent size. Now the colors, I know you'll look at them and be like, what the? But if you know Christy Rice's style, then you would totally understand this palette. Um, so these are the colors here in small little swatches. And then I did some testing right here. And look at those colors. Aren't those insane? <laughs> like when you open it and you see like this neon yellow and this red, you're like, I don't. What am I going to make? But watch her videos and then you'll see how that woman takes these crazy colors and makes what she makes. Because, yeah, initially I was like, uh, I don't know what I think of that one. Okay. Then I have one of the Schmincke Special Edition palettes, but I need to get the swatches for this one out. This is the Botanical. Okay, so I swatched them in my Etcher Cold Press 100% Cotton Sketchbook. That's the colors that came in their Botanical set, this one here. Um, obviously you have plenty of slots to add some more colors. I would add like my convenience mixes. Probably another green. Um, I would add some purples and pinks just because I'm too lazy. But overall, it was a really well-balanced palette. Um, and like I said, it's one of their special edition palettes. They usually come in this. I love the mixing wells. I'm not going to lie. And they come in this corrugated tin. The only thing is like, eh, these edges here are razor sharp. So... Just be careful of your palette because it, it may bite you. Okay, so this was a summer palette I made for myself last summer. And these are the colors I had put in it. Honestly, I was kind of just going with colors, convenience mixes, of course, because that's how I roll. If I don't have to mix it, I'm not gonna. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I really enjoyed putting together this palette. I did a lot of teals and stuff. I love using teals in my florals. I love mixing teals with other colors. They make some great greens. Um, and then, of course, I have a lot of my pinks and purples. This year, I need to make another one. I kept meaning, or my plan originally was to make a palette for every season. And um, I just got super busy. So I barely even got to enjoy this one. But that is the palette. It's few of them popped loose. I just need to wet it and pop, push it back down. Okay, then I have the Cosmic Shimmer paints. These were sent to me by a friend. Now, I use these more for adult coloring than watercolor, but these are them right here. This is set number one because I do have a couple different ones. They are freaky shimmery. <laughs> so, Really pretty though. I mean, you can use them for watercolor, but the quality is kind of um, lacking. Okay, then I have the first set of Schmincke I have ever purchased or ever purchased. This was a 36 count set Schmincke Hordam colors. Um, it was like on sale with Jackson's, so I was like, oh, I finally get to try Schmincke. Now, I really like these. One, I have a whole row so I can add more colors, but this is them all swatched out. Beautiful, beautiful colors. I love the way they performed. Um, yeah, I need to use these more, but I ended up getting uh, Schmincke tubes of different colors and trying out a few other things, and I went down the Schmincke rabbit hole, so I've got more Schmincke. I think I've got almost all Schmincke colors that I need. <laughs> so um, I don't know if that's a good thing. Okay, so the Dollar Brownie colors, like I said, I had gotten them on sale at Jackson's. In fact, they were on clearance. These are kind of like a student grade paint. However, when I swatched them, I really liked them. Um, I know I've done some paintings with them, and they really aren't too bad. They did poorly on this paper, but this is kind of crappy paper. This was before I started putting things in my Etcher Cold Press book. But I loved the selection of colors in this set. Um, great selection of everything you need between warm and cool colors. So yeah, this was a really well-rounded set, and I need to use it more. Um, I feel like Dollar Rowney, I totally misspelled it up there, but 
I feel like they're kind of underrated and they're actually really good paints in my opinion. So, yep, I do have that one. The only one that kind of was like, eh, is the Prussian blue. <laughs> but that's because once you've seen Prussian blue in some of the higher end sets, yeah, then you're like, oh, ooh, something's up with that one. Okay, a friend of mine had a bunch of extra tubes and so she made a little Daniel Smith palette for me. Um, just putting extra tube paint because a tube will last you forever and sent it to me and so I swatched them all out here and oh, they are beautiful 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 um, this is when I first discovered moon glow and it's glory uh, I love their phalo blue yeah I so this was nice it was like a little sampler so I could kind of get used to Daniel Smith and see what they had to offer so it was awesome that she sent that to me more people should do that like when we have tubes we should send each other little half pans or quarter pans because I swear a tube is going to take you forever to get through it no matter what <laughs> like it does take a while speaking of awesome generosity that same friend sent me 56 Holbein watercolors okay and she's put them all in here so like I said she'd put the tubes into half pans let them dry and then oops my hair stuck to them apparently um sent them to me and these are the colors and they were so pretty now I do have a video on my channel of me doing the dot cards um and the dot cards are fun to get an idea of like the color ranges but it was cool because a few of these already have some half pans of so they have well the dot card has 108 but I'm pretty sure they have more than 108 colors but either way it was nice she sent me these for a sample to play with and I just loved them and oh, they're really good paints I can't stand their colored pencils love their watercolors I had to zoom out for this one so I had bought the Magello Mission Pure Pigment set in the tube form um, and these are the colors that came with it and I had swatched them in my Etcher cold press and then what I did is I had bought the Magello Bulletproof Glass Palette <laughs> it's quite the mouthful huh and then I had stuck them in the palette to use so this whole palette is huge I had to zoom out for it the thing's a monster not travel friendly by any means I really do like the palette though um, it did have some beading though a lot of these more plasticky ones will but that's easy to fix color wise though I thought it was great I just felt like some colors were a little overkill you really don't need the big set of pure pigments you could get away with their smaller sets but I did love all these in here. Oh my gosh, these quinacridones. Ooh, their Crimson Lake was so pretty. So yeah, I had put them in a palette. I still have the tubes. And again, those tubes are going to be with me till the end of time, probably. With how many sets I have, it's going to obviously last a lot longer. Okay, then they had a sale on Sennelier. So I bought these. They came in the tubes, but in a tin so it's nice because you could totally transform this into something that holds half pans if you wanted um, I'm just leaving the tubes in there for now and the paints right here but I did swatch them out and they were pretty nice but I'm not gonna lie I don't think Sennelier is a paint for me um, so I'm glad I just got that smaller set the colors in this set are pretty wacky <laughs> <laughs> I was like wait huh but overall I mean they were they're really pretty just it, it's not for me I am definitely a Roman Schmal Schminka person um, so I'll show you that and why here in one second okay Roman Schmal I tried these when they were on sale at Jackson's. Yeah, most of my watercolors come from Jackson's Art. Rarely do I go to Blick unless I go in person. Um, I just like the prices at Jackson's. Um, rewards points are always nice as well. Blick, I would love it if you had a rewards program. So, what I had originally done with Roman Schmal, I love these because they come in a full pan. 
most companies you have to upgrade to, these come in a full pan and they're not like badly priced. So I had originally bought two different palettes. Um, and what I did is then I started purchasing some open stock and filling my palettes. So I had originally started with the Mona Amrani's palette. Loved a lot of the colors that I got in it. I was like, oh, these are so pretty. I love the way they perform. And then while on sale, I grabbed their Hortus Botanicus set along with three open stock. Well, then I went a wee bit further. Get this out of the way for a sec. And I bought a few more open stock Roman Schmall paints. And that was to, oop, there we go. That was to kind of round out my set. So here are the other Roman Schmall that I had bought open stock. Now I had done that because I was going to create my own full Roman Schmall palette, which is actually right here, this one. Um, where'd the other one go? <laughs> What's up there? So I've taken all the colors I love. Now I need to make a swatch chart. Um, in fact, that's in progress right here. I don't know, right here. Yeah, <laughs> it's in my book. So I put all the colors I like from open stock and the two sets into this one palette here. And then I took all the colors, I don't want to call them rejects, they're just not in my mood right now, but that could change. Ugh. This one was warped. So I put all my spares in here, except my little shadow gray, I need to find a spot for it. So yeah, I just need to now swatch this bad boy, which is on my to-do list this week, to show my Roman Schmall palette. Lots of greens, lots of purples in here that I've added. Um, but yeah, I love their paints. So smooth, so beautiful. I mean, honestly, they're quite the impressive little paint. Uh, I need to keep this all together though, because they're for my special little project. Okay, that's palettes. Now we gotta talk tubes. I have a lot of tubes. <laughs> Not very organized either. Uh, what can a girl say? I do have a lot of these and spare tins, and I plan to make my palettes with them. Probably even give some palettes to a friend. Ooh, my potter's pink from Roman Schmall is just hanging out in there. Um, I'm not going to show you all the swatches for these. We'd be here for days. However, some that I know are in this book, for example. So I've got like the Windsor and Newton. These are a couple colors I had picked up to try out. Um, they were okay. <laughs> uh, I had also picked up some Van Gogh. Now these are the, from the Dusk set. So they're supposed to be like a granulating, super gorgeous paint. And they are. They're lovely. Um, I had also picked up some Rembrandt out of curiosity. I try to use the little tube swatch to let me know, hey, Corey, that's in your tubes. Um... Oh, this is some Schmincke Super Granulation Open Stock Colors I had grabbed. Because there were a few sets that I didn't want all the colors in that set. So that was why I just went with the Open Stock. Um, okay, and then these are the Super Granulation sets from Schmincke I did get the full sets of. So I got Shire, which is right here all these greens and such. It's really pretty. Um, probably could do without a couple of them, but then I got the Haze set, which I swatched right here. Very dark, very dark. Uh, let's see, the Galaxy set I had gotten right here. And those are in the tubes as well. They're 5 ml tubes. These are gonna last me forever though. I mean, they look so tiny, I know. That's a lot of paint, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, and then I got the Deep Sea set, which I actually really like. I really like the Deep Sea colors. In fact, one of them was in my summer palette, so that's why it's out of its case. Uh, let's see. I'm just seeing if there's any other tube ones that I can show you. Like I said, I try to stick to using a tube. Oh, I didn't for this one. I lied. These are all my open stock tubes of Daniel Smith paints, which are down here, like this bad boy here. Unfortunately, when I went to Blick, 
it was <laughs> they had the 15 mls of a lot of the colors i'm like oh my gosh that's gonna take me forever but they were on sale um so i did grab a couple like i love their rose of ultramarine oh my gosh look at that color they're quinacridone purple i love love the daniel smith sap green i really do roman schmall i do like a little more um but it's gorgeous and then i grabbed a couple of their blues and greens obviously you can tell i prefer botanicals because those are colors i tend to buy um let's see those are the sommelier and i think that's it but yeah i do have quite a few random ones in here I mean, like I said, I have zero organization. <laughs> I've got some student grade Sennelier, which I'll probably put in my D stash pile as well. Look, it even says student grade, so you know. Oh, I'm gonna keep those out. I have some M Graham. I I wanted to love M Graham. I really did. Um, but I'm gonna put those in my D stash pile as well. I do not like M Graham. Too sticky for me. So they weren't something I'll ever use again. In fact, here's the other M grams. They have like this basic mixing set. Um, I know I have some other like random brands in here. Winter Newton. <clears throat> oh, here's another student grade. I know I have some Azaro. Oh, here we go. So I did get some Azaro. I only have like two. I just wanted to try them. I actually really like these. I got them from Jackson's as well. But I don't think I'm going to spend much more on those. Oh, there's another Imgram. Must have been a bigger set than I thought. Um, I'm not going to spend much on them just because they're okay, but they don't wow me. Um, I have some spare Schminka <laughs> things in here. Uh, most of the tubes in here are Daniel Smith right now but that is because I have an entire pile of tubes of Schminka paint that I need to swatch so um, while Daniel Smith is dominating this pile here along with Windsor and Newton once I swatch my Schminka pile that's sitting over there and has been for like two months I will um, have a lot more paints than person needs and I'm more than aware of that. Uh, but yeah, what I'll be doing when I de-stash some of these tubes, I'll be going through, looking at the swatch, and seeing like, hey, am I going to use that tube like ever? If not, it's going in the de-stash pile. I'm trying to like de-stash a lot. Um, I have a lot of watercolors, uh, but you know, I also run a channel, or I had an adult. I have not had. It's still running. <laughs> I have an adult coloring channel. So I use my watercolors on there. Now I've opened my watercolor channel, but a lot of these paint sets you see, I have done reviews on my other channel for um, first impressions and all that great stuff. So that's why I have so many. Like I've had people go, hey, what are the Magello Mission paints like? I'm like, I don't know. Let me buy them and find out. <laughs> so I have a lot from my old channel, but I plan to use them on here. <clears throat> um, I'll do a review. And then also, like I said, I am going to be de-stashing quite a bit of my watercolors that I don't plan to ever use. Um, I may even ship out a few little curated sets for fun to subscribers, friends, and whatnot. Because I, you know, I, these tubes, there may be one, <clears throat> for example, Permanent Orange by Daniel Smith. I really do like this color. But I like the orange I have in my Roman Schmall a little better, um, even though it's called Permanent Yellow. Uh, they're close enough. <laughs> but this is a 15 ml. It's going to take me forever to get through the Roman Schmall full pan, let alone this tube here. I don't use my paints out of the tube. I always end up putting them in a palette or a half pan. So yeah, that's another thing to keep in mind. I do have more palettes in addition to tubes that I have to swatch, and I'll do that on camera. I was saving them until I opened my watercolor channel, but yeah, this is so far what I have in my collection, and I do want to pare it down and kind of like, really, because the palettes I end up reaching for every single time are my Roman Schmall and um, Schminka colors, and I am going to create my own custom palette of Schminka, but also my studio palette. In fact, let me show you. 
Okay, so I received this from Arit. She's here on YouTube. This is her perfect palette. And oh my gosh, it is perfect. What I love about it is because not all of our paints come in tubes, like Roman Schmall, love them, but they only come in full pan. <laughs> so I would need a place to put those. This is gonna be my studio palette. It's got this huge mixing up here. And then I can put my tube colors I like. I can put anything that's in a pan in here. But also, I'm going to have like a row for seasonal or specialty, like things I want to swap out as the season changes or have a full row of like granulating colors. And then I also have this other one here. This one I need to put a magnet on. But I plan to use this to create my Schmincke palette. Can we talk about the mixing area on this thing? Not only do you have these, but then you've got this up here. And this is going to be for Schmincke. It's pretty, it's pink. And then I have tons of other just like this um, that I plan to use to create some custom palettes and have some fun. Like I want to create a Daniel Smith palette. Um, my studio palette will be a mixture of brands though. Most likely leaning towards Roman Schmall and Schmincke paints. However, I know there will be a couple Daniel Smith colors in there. Um, maybe, you know, I've found that I'm not the biggest fan of Winsor & Newton. I tried. I really did. <laughs> but they're just not for me. So yeah, my studio palette will definitely mix a bunch together. But that is one of the many projects I have in the pipeline. But a girl only has so much time. So... For now, that is my watercolor collection, tubes and palettes. Um, I don't think I have that many. I mean, I've seen people with more. <laughs> so uh, I'm not that bad, but like I said, quite a few of these things I'm going to de-stash. Um, so I'll make a little de-stashing video once I'm ready. I need to get through all my tubes. I need to swatch my other Schmincke tubes and kind of narrow down what I actually want to keep and whatnot. But thank you for hanging out with me. And until next time, everyone, take care. Bye now.